Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our English. We want to improve our vocabulary. And the way we do that is to learn is, is by learning a few new words every day. Today there are three words we are going to learn. Or to be more precise, three words uh, that you may have heard of, but we're going to learn the differences between them. The words are, we're going to learn their nuances. The first word is reverberation. Reverberation. Repercussions and finally a ramification. Ramification. I do not know why I had this uncontrollable urge to cover these three words. Most likely because uh, when people use these words, they use them as synonyms. They would say there will be reverber they would say there will be re reverberation, there will be repercussions, there will be ramif ramif ramification, and they use these words together as if they are synonyms, which they are. They do basically mean the same thing, but not quite. There are nuances, and that's what I want to cover today. Let's start with the word, the very first word, reverberation. Re were were rat right. reverberate reverberate which is a noun what does it mean reverberate what they all they all basically mean the same thing they all mean consequences they all all, all of these words mean consequences, uh, results, or the effect. They all basically mean these three words, mostly consequences. If someone says that uh, if you do not show up, if you do not show up to school, if you do not go to school today, there will be repercussions, there will be reverberation, there will be uh, ramification. What they're telling you is that there will be consequences. Sometimes you may have heard of somebody uh, warning you by saying that there will be consequences of utmost gravity. Oh, there's a good word to learn. Gravity. The word gravity is a, simple, uh, is a tricky word. Gravity has two meanings. First meaning of the word you already know obviously. Gravity as in Newton. The second meaning of gravity, the second meaning of the word gravity has to do with the word grave. Again, grave has two meanings. One meaning you already know. Grave is in place where uh, you bury a dead person. I don't know why I had to emphasize dead part in it, obviously. Where you bury... Uh, that's the grave. The second meaning of the word grave is serious. Serious. If someone says it's a grave matter, what they're telling you is that it's a serious matter. And therefore, gravity means something that has seriousness. So, if somebody warns you that if you do, if you don't do this, this, and that, there will be repercussions of utmost gravity. What they're telling you is that there will be very serious consequences. And they are basically used as a synonym. They all mean consequence. They all mean consequences. The difference is that reverberate means reverberate is more of a. It's more of a direct effect. As opposed to repercussions. Which is more of an indirect effect. 
it is it is an effect just like this though there as I said as I, as I keep repeating all three of these words mean consequences but this is more of an indirect consequences indirect effect let me give you an example so that you know exactly how to use the word in a proper context for example if someone says if your boss says well, if, or if, it, if someone says that if I don't go to work today I will get fired well I will get fired by is the reverberation and if I get fired I won't be able to pay my rent and I won't be able to pay for my car payment I will lose my apartment and I will lose my car those are the repercussions you understand that's what it is you don't have to be this nitty greedy I don't know why I'm covering them I just covered them because they bug me they bother me so I want you to learn them but that's the difference uh, one is the direct effect the other one is the indirect effect let's learn the word Ramification. Ram ramification obviously is also an effect, but oh, we never talked about the pronunciation of this word, repercussion. Re -per -kush Sometimes some people pronounce this as I'm going to put the second pronunciation in red so that it doesn't get confused with the other one. Sometimes some people pronounce this as well, that's not the end of it. As repercussions. Repercussions and repercussions, they are both considered as acceptable pronunciation and it simply means an indirect effect of an event as opposed to reverberation which is more of a direct effect what does ramification mean ramification simply means let me first write down the pronunciation ram o fi k shun which is a noun ramification simply means uh, uh, branching, subdividing, subdividing, partitioning, so the difference between ramification and either repercussion or reverberation is that if you would use the word ramification if you're trying to emphasize that if you don't do this, then, then, if you don't do this, then, this, this, and this, and that will happen. This, this, and that will happen since there are, is branching out, is forking, there is more than one there. This will happen, this will happen, this will happen. That's ramification. It's not an effect, but it is an effect, but it has a, uh, it is a mini prong effect. It's not just a one prong, it is not just one branch. There are many branches to it. There are many different many different things would happen as a result of either having done something or having not done something. Do you understand? If you do not show up for the work today, I will, I will uh, obviously not pay you for this today, obviously, and I will also cancel the bonus. Well, there you go. That's, that wasn't a good example, but it does the job. It's ramification because now we're talking about branching, subdividing, partitioning. There is more than one at the same time. That was it. That was the end of it. So again, ramification means branching, forking, subdividing, shooting off, partitioning. Partitioning. That's it. I'm done with those three words. We covered them. I feel much better. They are out of my system. I'm ready to move on with my life. I don't know about you. If you are too, then allons-y. Let's go on to the next word. The next word that I want to talk about is a very simple word and yet sometimes people have trouble understanding it. Comprehensive. Com. Pre. Hands. 
comprehensive. Comprehensive. Again, comprehensive has two meanings. One meaning of the word comprehensive, probably you already know, not probably, but you, you know it most likely, because it has to do with the it has to do with the word comprehend. To comprehend means to understand something. And from word the from the word comprehend, we have comprehensive, which means something uh, that that shows understanding of something. The second meaning of the word comprehensive is which is, which is the meaning that a lot, of, a lot of people sometimes do not see it. The second meaning of the word comprehensive is thorough, complete, all, all encompassing, and finally, all inclusive. So if someone says that uh, I had a comprehensive checkup of my car, well, in that context of what comprehensive means, complete checkup. I went to the mechanic and I asked the mechanic to give my car a comprehensive test, comprehensive exam, so to, to tell me everything and anything that may be wrong with it. Check the brakes, check the fluid, check the, uh, check the, well, you get the idea. Check everything. That's it. That's what I ran out. That's how much I know about the cars. But anyway. Sometimes you do that. You want to take the car for a certain mileage and uh, when a certain mileage comes due, you might do a comprehensive exam at 60,000 miles or 120,000 miles. That's when you do the tune-up. That's when you do all the, all, all the mumbo-jumbo and, uh, and so forth. That's such, a, such an exam is called comprehensive exam. Or you might say that uh, this is his comprehensive work. This is author's comprehensive work. What you're trying to tell me, what you're trying to tell the person is that Anything and everything that, that this particular author wrote, this is the comprehensive work of Mark Twain. That means anything and everything that he wrote in his entire life, we have in this library the comprehensive work. Everything that he wrote, everything including. It's all inclusive. We have not left out anything. You understand? Comprehensive. Let me give you one more example of the word comprehensive. Uh, if you're taking, if you're preparing for the GRE or the GMAT, then obviously you're going to graduate school. And at the end of your graduate work, in the graduate school, at the end of it, you will be uh, required to sit for an exam. Those exams are, are called comprehensive. But out of laziness, people abbreviate it, and they refer to this, that exam. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to ruin this particular thing here. I'm going to write here. The exams that I'm talking about that you'll have to sit at the end of your graduate program, is, they are comprehensives, and people abbreviate them as COMPS. COMP with an S at the end if there's more than one and you take your comps. What it means is that you take your comprehensive and the reason why those exams are called comprehensive is not because they're trying to see if you understand anything, if you understood anything, they're called comprehensive because those exams by their very nature happens in the last years of years of graduate school, you sit for your comps and these are, these are, like, a, these are, these are like the exam that you take in the medical college to become a doctor or this, this, this is like an exam that you might take a, a bar exam to become a lawyer, that's, that's what these exams are like and they are so cool because they cover everything, all the subject that you studied throughout the entire four or six or two years, whatever your training was in the graduate school, it, they cover everything. They touch upon every single uh, subject, every, every, every single course that you took in your entire graduate school. They are thorough, they are complete, they are all inclusive, they are all encompassing. They are called comps. For example, if you are majoring in economics, if, you, if you're getting a graduate degree in economics, you sit for your comps. Usually, you're given a comprehensive in microeconomics, you're given a comprehensive in macroeconomics, and then finally, you're given a third comps for the field that you chose to specialize in, whatever the field might be labor economics, monetary economics, urban economics, whatever it is. So, you take, three, you take three comps. Do you understand? And they, again, they're called comps because those exams they cover everything before they give you your final degree. Comps. Comprehensive. That was it. That's all I have for today. I hope you found it interesting, I hope you found it uh, helpful and uh, hopefully you and I, we are both uh, learning new words every day and, and, and having a better understanding of, of the language and more appreciation of the language as a matter, as a result of it, I hope. Uh, or as my, as my boy would say, what bloody well hopes so, so that's, what, that's what I'm hoping as well. Anyway, if you wish to get hold of me, if you're preparing for the GRE, GMAT, SAT or TOEFL, and if there is anything at all that I can help you in your preparation, go to my, any of these website addresses and send me an email and I'll be more than happy to
help you out in whatever way I can, all right? Or you can go to kashwaniprep.com and send me an email from there. I do private tutoring, face-to-face -face tutoring, obviously. I also tutor over the internet via Skype and over the telephone, okay? Thanks.